society assuming that you are not looking good or you're not like um, some film star or you're not like somebody that is a lie of the devil <clears throat> you know you're not like can you tell me okay for example the devil may tell you you're not like pastor shichu don't worry about it i mean you can't be as handsome as i am that's okay but remember god created everybody beautiful young people i'm i'm speaking to especially many of you young people a lot of your confidence seem to depend on how good you appear to other people i'll give you a simple example have you seen how a lot of youngsters feel very bad when they go to the, when they have a haircut because all their confidence is in the nice hair flowing and wow i'm you know one day the daddy tells come here cut your hair no <laughs> everybody grows up like that because they seem to think that their their acceptance is greatly dependent on how good they look this morning i want to tell all my young brothers and sisters your acceptance is not dependent on how handsome or how beautiful you are your acceptance is dependent on how you conduct yourself how you behave to other people you see you can go and meet a film star let us say you are waiting to meet a, a big film star you know and you were waiting for days and then suddenly the star comes you know and you were waiting so many days you send him a, a tweet and you you liked him on the facebook and you know and then suddenly you heard that the superstar is coming to philly so you fasted and prayed that you'll be able to meet the film star <laughs> so you took even a vacation and then you got an opportunity to get an autograph from the film star you are waiting at the gate of the auditor he comes and i am busy that is the end of your hero worship because you found out that he is he does not know how to behave to people let us know this that god has given us certain things in our life which need not be changed but whatever things need to be changed he has given us an authority over it and what you need not change is not going to affect your progress or your prosperity so do not worry about what people may think of you do not worry about what people may assume you are know that jesus loves you and he has accepted you do you know why families fail family relationships fail over a period of time because the husband does not match up to the wife's expectation the wife doesn't match up to the husband's expectation because many people think that marriage is you know all the time in cloud nine somebody said marriage love falling in love is a uh, love is blind marriage is an eye-opener There was a case in a in a family court. Why? My husband snores when he sleeps. I can't live with him. What is marriage? Marriage is acceptance till the last day of your life. You don't throw out people because somebody snored. No, that'd be ridiculous. Because somebody didn't accept somebody, you're not able to accept someone else. Relationships break because we cannot accept someone. I, I, I can't accept that person. Sorry. Did you know why you are not able to accept someone else? Shall I tell you the secret? Because you did not accept yourself in the first place. If you accept yourself in the first place, you can accept anybody in the world. Many years ago, I had this experience when the Lord taught me. I was a member of a church. I was a member of a church like this and having a good time. And uh, Rena and I, we were very highly respected and loud. And the pastor had so much of confidence upon us and dependence on us and all that. And one day, a very, very, very poor man. Poor man means he's so impoverished. He comes into the church. 
and uh, the pastor in this here is so and so pastor he's a pastor he's so and so and uh, you know and his, his his wife also very uneducated you know and uh, they were standing there and after the pastor introduced their new family i just went and said hello and i have this habit of finding out people's family roots and i found out that this man was a third generation uncle Ooh. immediately i put my hand around him i said wow you are my uncle he is looking at me up uh, same family as absolutely same family i know he could not accept himself then i told some of my brothers hey that is my uncle and some of the sisters your uncle i said my uncle because the image um, i and reena and the children had in the church was you know, mighty prince he was a man who did not have any charm or charisma or, and his wife was uneducated she went only to fourth grade oh i said yeah she is by marriage she is my own i am proud of her i am glad they brought them into the church you know why i said that i was able to accept myself many years ago in the kingdom of god i knew jesus accepted me as i am and he said uh, uh, you know brother you uh, just keep our relationship to ourselves i said why something will happen to you, you know what will happen to me nothing will happen to me i am what i am by the grace of god this is the way god has created me in my mother's womb and i am proud of it i love every bit of this frame which god has created i am fearfully and wonderfully made so i don't care if you know i have a very poor uncle and i don't equally care if i have a rich uncle accept yourself when you accept yourself you'll be able to accept anybody under the sun amen that's 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 a secret of having long standing relationship that's a secret of great marriage my grandfather and grandmother lived together both on either side i remember for 65 years they found out that they were not uh, they were opposite in character they found out after the first 10 years of their marriage my grandmother was the let's go do it now positive person my grandfather was no let us do it next week my grandmother didn't care about money she said i made that money come on let 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 let's use it grandfather said yes we made the money hold it let us save something in the bank they lived together for 65 years because they were able to accept one another they were able to accept themselves i'm speaking to young people today accepting yourself we make you acceptable in front of people 2013 the lord gave me an opportunity to speak to some brothers and sisters back in south philly uh i think very few people from asia almost all of the people were there we were all given an opportunity to speak the lord gave me a revelation at that moment and i began to speak out and there was this brother who suddenly came and said all these years we needed somebody from asia to come and tell us the truth You know why it happened? Because I had accepted myself. In all my life so far, I never had to face a racial discriminatory word in the United States of America. Because I knew my Jesus was above every race. Now I did. I, I, I mean, it made no sense to me. The other day, I think somebody tried. It was only after we left the place that I it suddenly registered to me. Oh, probably she was, you know, I was I was walking into a place and suddenly there was this lady who said, "Do you understand English?" I said, "Yeah." Oh, maybe most of it. I didn't take it seriously. It was only after five ten minutes I began to realize it was actually a a racial jab, but it didn't affect me at all because I know who I am. I know who has re redeemed me. I know what is inside me. makes no difference to me somebody is getting a message young people i'm talking to you you are you are settling down god is getting you ready to take over responsibilities in the kingdom he is raising you up to take up responsibilities 
Even in this land which God has brought you and your forefathers, God is raising you up. Do not be as those who cannot accept themselves because Jesus has already accepted you. You are accepted. You are loved more than you think. Some people still think, then why pastor, why don't I? I, I feel that way. Why is it that when I'm accepted, I have to still face a lot of these situations where I don't feel accepted, I still feel rejected. The answer is very simple. If you find an answer to that, your life is going to change. And tonight, this, just now, I'm going to tell you that answer. If you can find out truly who Jesus is. Jesus is not religion. Jesus is not asking you to do good so that you can get some blessings. The wrong understanding of Jesus. Who is Jesus? We have a lot of theological understanding about Jesus. He is the son of God. He is th that. He came into the world. He came into the flesh. He is the God of the Christians. Blah, 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 blah. And blah, 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 blah. These blah, blahs won't tell us about Jesus. Jesus is what God expects you to be. And Jesus is what God will give to you so that you may be what God wants you to be. He never, I have never seen the Lord condemning us. Have you? I have not yet, having read the Bible, I have still to come to a passage where he looks down on some people. Probably he, he was a little upset with the Pharisees. And he would have told them, you white to our sepulchers. But he didn't mean to condemn them. He, I don't think he was shouting at them. He was speaking to them in love. You, you know, probably his heart was so broken. You white to our sepulchers. You know, I have, don't think he was a person who would go around destroying other people's. He will not go down destroying other people's character or speaking bad about them. No, no. Probably if you knew the most, what shall I say, the amazing person you ever know. I tell you the Jesus I speak is somebody greater than that. For many people, their, their mother is the most tender person they can, they can think of. Most tender person. Jesus is more tender than that. Many people, especially young girls, they have an attachment to their daddies. Their papas. You know, it's natural. It happens that way. They, they have a, what do you say, a... a you know, they don't like it when, they, they will find fault with their dads, but they don't like it when somebody else finds fault with their dad. And I see all my daughters, not only Miriam and Achu, but all the daughters smiling here. You know, daughters have, a, have, a, have a, a love for their dad. And they always think very highly of their fathers. For them, their dad is the ultimate. Jesus is greater than that. He's more ultimate than that. He is... If you, were to, uh, uh, if you were to know how tender he is, which is the newest addition to the family, where is that? Is it uh, Dice's baby? Okay. Look at Kesia. See how tender her hands are. So cute. <laughs> That's how tender the heart of Jesus is. Human hearts were made to be tender and compassionate exactly as Jesus was. That is what Jesus' heart is for you. I love you. Every thought that he has for us is only good. Did you know that he continuously thinks of good things for you? How many people, how many people have parents? I ask this every Sunday, I think. What do you think of your children? Only good. Only good. How much more a heavenly father who only thinks of your good. He only wants the best for you. And he will give you the best. But there is a, a, a point in our life. We need to realize this. God loves all people in the world. But somewhere along the way, some people realize, realize the greatness of this God. We are people who have realized it. How did we realize it? There were points of, 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 of 
what shall i say rejection failures things did not work out the way that we expected it suddenly all the things you had a dream of the future for began to crumble and somebody said why don't you try jesus i know the story of a young man who was living in a van he was a graduate from vanderbilt university he got into some financial trouble and he was living in a van somebody called him to a church the only thing he knew about church was his father and his mother never used to go to church wonderful family so he also said no but people kept on calling him come to church so he finally decided to go to church because that church used to serve coffee to anyone who came so because he was so hungry he was living in a van he went to that church that day whatever the pastor spoke was for him he made a commitment to god he said lord if you will prosper me i will stand with you he's one of the new multi multi millionaires of america who can jesus make multi millionaires yes what is the story of colgate you know colgate colgate whatever you say presbyterian he had a, a talk with jesus one day lord if you touch me and bless me i will stand with you even today after so many generations william colgate god has kept that name all of you know william colgate do not think walking with jesus is coming to church every day being nice and taking part of the lord's table and reading the bible and praying and live trying to live a holy 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 life no 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 that is not only christianity there are greater things young people i'm speaking to you god wants you to be productive 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 god wants you to make a mark in this world we are living even before you leave this world young people i am telling you i am charging you i am i am i am i am asking you take on the responsibility do not leave this world without making a mark for jesus your only one life it will soon be passed only what is done for christ will last ct stud famous cricketer of the 1800s in the united kingdom he said that he was a great cricketer very famous he met with jesus his life changed and he said only one life it will soon be passed only what is done for christ will last how can you make a mark by walking the way with somebody who already made a mark an influence don't be don't be yeah he also was there yeah he also used to come to the church yeah 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 they were also part of the worship team no every one of you every one of you have been called to make a mark for jesus and all it takes is to start walking with him to die saying lord i want to walk with you meaningfully whether you like it or not you will have made that mark you cannot carry perfume in your bosom without making known that you have perfume in your bosom he is the greatest perfume you can ever think of you don't have to necessarily propagate him your presence is his presence when you go somewhere he is there with you he makes the mark let me also quickly impress your try to impress your hearts your blessed hearts today telling you about a man who had no name a man who had no name jim carver is what they called him Jim Carver have you heard of Carver Jim Carver in fact he had no name he was known as Carver's Jim C A R V E R Carver's Jim because his owner's name was Carver in those days people used to hold people under them he had no name but he was a man who knew God who knew Jesus and Jesus turned him around he was a revolutionary in the area of peanuts today the children have their school books about his life jim carver was used by god he was the man who taught the united states of america and the world over the the all the particularities of the peanut because he walked with jesus 
Do not think serving God is being behind the pulpit. Do not think serving God is reading the Bible every day. Do not think serving the Lord is someday you have to be in the pulpit. Do not think that even scrubbing the floor of the, of the church is serving God. All those things are there. But there is a big field out there for you. That God wants to make a mark out of you. And I see many of you are holding back because of acceptance. But the Lord has plans for you. Amen. Can we close our eyes for a minute? May this be your prayer, my beloved. I spoke to mainly to young people. But this is my prayer for myself and everybody here. God has given, let this be your prayer. Lord, help me to know that I have been accepted by you. Help me to realize the acceptance that you gave to me through Jesus. And help me to make a mark in this world for you. That even if after I come to be with you, that will still be back in the world, bringing many people to the kingdom and telling them about you. Father, we thank you for speaking to us that message that came from the Spirit of God. Lord, all our people, those who are struggling without a face, struggling without an identity, struggling for acceptance, those who are going through denial and rejection. This morning, Father, I want to bless them. That they may realize the amazing potential you have deposited in them. Greater is he who is in us than who is in the world. Help them to know you. Help them to walk with you. Help us, Lord, together to make a mark in this world for your name. That we may be individuals. Not copycats, not carrying somebody else's vision, but individuals having, knowing the specific goal, the plan that you have for us. Knowing fully well that you love us and that you care for us. We thank you because you will do it. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen, amen, amen. amen. Thank you.